in the last video, I made this uh, blue plot here, um, where I plot the loss function L2 uh, as a function of w while I keep b constant. So, so that is this uh, plot here. Now what I show here in the orange uh, line is a quadratic approximation to the blue line. So basically I uh, found two parameters. One is the value of w where the, the L2 is smallest and then uh, a constant here that determines the shape. And as you can see, I can approximate the blue line very well uh, by this orange quadratic form here. And so the advantage of that is that I can use the gradient or the slope uh, of the orange line, which I show here, at some particular guess value of w. And this slope or first derivative with respect to w points uh, towards the best value here. In fact, I can take this equation here and solve it for the best w, which is really what I, I want. And as I can see, uh, I, the gradient and this constant here tells me how I have to change my guess value in order to get the best value of w. Uh, so now in general we don't know what this k is and so normally what we just do is replace this 1 over k with a constant that we call the learning rate uh, and this should be a, a relatively small number because k here is usually quite a bit larger than 1. Uh, some other terminology, uh, so this is the derivative uh, but in machine learning lingo again we call this the gradient, it's exactly the same. So the idea is that we take a guess value, calculate the gradient, and then we update w according to this equation. So we basically subtract the learning rate times the gradient. That gets us a new point here. Then we evaluate the gradient, take another step, evaluate the gradient, take another step, and so forth. And because the gradient corresponds to the slope, Right? As you get closer and closer to w best, the slope gets smaller and smaller, so the steps get smaller and smaller until they eventually reach a point where the gradient is zero. And so each step here in machine learning lingo is called an epoch. So this gives us an automated, automated way of starting from a guess value of w and letting the machine um, learn how to go down to the best value of w. Now this, that for, in order for to us to implement that, of course we need to know what the gradient is. Right? So we need to know what the derivative of the actual um, function is rather than this uh, approximation. Uh, so that's what I have here. So if you don't, if you don't, uh, if your calculus is a little rusty or you haven't had calculus yet, don't really worry about this. Um, the main point is that we're going to have some e uh, equations here at the end that we're going to implement in our program. But just very briefly, so we have y predicted, um, the loss function uh, depends on y predicted in this fashion. So when we take the derivative with respect to w, we get this, which is really the error, and then we have to take uh, the derivative, the negative derivative uh, of this function with respect to w, and that is just x. So the negative sign comes out here, and so the gradient of L2 with respect to W is just minus the error times x. Now we also need it for the bias, uh, and so we solve that in a similar fashion here. Okay, so these are the equations we need to implement. So of course we need to do this for, for all data points, so we'll take the gradient of w, that's the average of the error times x, and the gradient of the bias is minus the average error. Okay, let's do some coding. Okay, so uh, let's, yeah, so what I need to do is I need to take a guess at w, and so let's just use 1.5 like we did last time. And instead of uh, looping over guesses for w, we're not going to loop over epochs. 
So we don't need RDL2 list anymore. We need to tell the program how many epochs we want to try. Let's just make it one to start with. And so, or, or let's just say we want to make it, we want to try 10. So we need to do this 10 times. So in order to do that, we write this like so. Oh, I need to reconnect here. I timed out. So this will do um, whatever is in here 10 times. Okay, so just, um, let's just, there's no print statement. We don't have a list here anymore. Let's just print out epoch so you can see what happens. Uh, and we don't need this plot here anymore. Okay, so you can see this loop now simply loops uh, from zero, which is where Python starts to count, all the way up to nine. So it does this 10 times. Uh, let me just set this back to one for now. So it only does it once. Okay, so we make a prediction using uh, the guess value. So that is just a W the guess value 1.5 for W and 0 for B. And so now we want to calculate the error. And from the error, we calculate uh, L2. Okay, great. Uh, so let's say maybe we want to, at this point, print out uh, what epoch we're in and L2. Let's try that. Okay, great. So now we want to change uh, the bias and the weight. So in order to do that, we need to calculate the gradient for the bias, for example. And so that is just minus the mean of the error. And then we need to update B. So that is just the current value of B times uh, the learning rate times the gradient of B. Uh, so I have to define what the learning rate is. And that should be a small number less than one. So let's just say 0 0.01. Okay, and then I need to do the same for W. So that is again, I can copy this here, and then I need to multiply that by x. Um, so let's see, that should do it, right? So uh, if I try this, if I run this true once, uh, let's print out w and b here and see if they've changed. So let's try to run this. Okay, so zero epoch zero, my L2 function, and the, ah, I did not update my W, of course. Okay, so W minus learning rate. Let's just copy that. So that's W. Okay. So, okay, so what's going on here? is that I calculate the mean error by x. Now, what I actually want is the mean of the error times x. That's the, that's the equation I derived. So let's try this again. Okay, great. So you can see that um, w was changed from 1.5 to 1.46, so that was made a little smaller, and b was also made a tiny little bit smaller. Okay, let's try to run this a few more times. Uh, 10. Okay, so the loss function goes down as it should and W and B are updated. Um, okay, let's see if we can get, see if we can get the loss function even down even further. 
Um, I'm starting to get a lot of printout here, uh, which is a little confusing. So I'm, uh, let's see. So what I would like to try, let me move the printout back here. I think what I would like here is just that I print out um, So every time I run a tenth of the epochs. Okay, so let's say I have a hundred here. I would just like one for the start and for 10 and for 20 and so forth. So the way I do this is um, like this. So if the, uh, let's see. Yes, so if the epoch, um, let me just write it and then I, Oops, ex explain it. Let's just see if it works before I explain it. Okay, great. So what this does, what this uh, percent does is tells you the remainder. Uh, and so if the remainder is zero, then I print something out, right? And so I have number of epochs divided by 10. So that's, that's 10, 100 divided by 10 is, 100, is 10. Uh, and so every time the number of epochs is evenly divisible with no remainder from 10, then I print, then I print out L2. Uh, okay, so we can see this still goes down. So maybe I should give them give it more epochs. So I can see that with uh, a thousand epochs, the L2 function uh, or the L2 error is still going down, but now it's going down by a tiny little bit. Uh, so let me just try 10,000 and see if that shouldn't uh, do it. So 10,000, now of course each. Um, Printout is going to take a little bit longer. Yes, so you can see now here at the very very end, uh, the L2 loss, the L2 loss is not changing anymore, right? Because the gradient is zero, and so the thing has converged, the simulation has converged, and this is the best uh, guess at um, D and W, or W and D. Okay, so let's uh, let's just plot it to see if that actually uh, worked. So let's uh, plot our y values as points and our y predicted as a line. Okay, that looks like a pretty good plot. Congratulations, if you followed along this far, you've now written your very first machine learning algorithm.